How can we manage uh, infection after cataract surgery? And uh, how can the patient uh, take control of this? I think the important issue is uh, when patients undergo cataract surgery, uh, generally most of the cataract surgeons would provide a detailed leaflet and instruction to the patient that what they need to look after for at least initial two weeks. So if they typically develop any pain, redness, unexpected situation after surgery, that means that there's something possibly wrong. And unless an ophthalmologist or eye surgeon assesses the patient, it's difficult to know what's really going on. So I think I would encourage all those patients having any possible difficulty to liaise with the department where they were operated immediately and uh, uh, visit them straight away and then they can find out what's really wrong. And if there is infection, then of course it's a different ball game and uh, retinal surgeons mostly needs to get involved in managing the infection in the eye following the cataract surgery. Will that be again with another surgery or with uh, some uh, medicine? I think that's a very good question. Now, that was my topic yesterday for my talk. Now, for the last 25 years, there is a study called endophthalmitis vitrectomy study, or EVS, which has uh, developed some guidelines in managing post-cataract surgery infection, or endophthalmitis. Now, that is 25 years old, and uh, it was done in an era where technology had limitation and our scientific understanding has limitation. So, what I was arguing and supporting was to undergo immediate surgery in terms of removing the gel, with toxins and bugs and everything as a cocktail from the back of the eye as a primary approach in most of the cases there's still a supportive argument for very small group of infection following cataract surgery where they can do well with some injection in the eye without having surgery in form of vitrectomy but i am a strong supporter of early and primary vitrectomy for endophthalmitis post cataract surgery or because of any other reason also. And I've spoken to many experts in the world and uh, a direct question from my side was what would they prefer if it is their eye, hypothetically, and uh, almost all but one has accepted that they would prefer early or primary vitrectomy as I mentioned just now. Uh, so that's, that's the main thing, but that's mainly for a discussion for the practicing eye surgeons rather than for the patient because for patient it's important to know what is going on in first place and then decide the next step. But what could go wrong uh, from the first place? I mean what could cause the infection? Oh yes, that's an important point because most of the surgeons they take precautions to reduce the risk of infection um, and we are living in day and age where the drugs are really good so the chances of infection has gone down significantly comparing with what it used to be 30, 20 or 10 years ago. But still there is always a minimal risk of infection which can be because of the bugs in the eye itself. There are like in our gut there are bacteria, our mouth there are some bacteria. Same way in our eye uh, we call it conjunctival flora. So some organisms, the bacteria are there. We use some medication beforehand before the surgery so that it covers all the spectrum of bugs uh, and that reduces the risk of infection. But still, if that conjunctival flora related infection happens, then it's not that bad. But patient can have pets at home. They may get exposed to dusty, windy and wet atmosphere, which can lead to bugs going in the eye in the immediate post-operative period, or if they develop any injury to the eye, which allows bugs to go in the eye. So in uncomplicated surgery, these are the main reasons one need to look for. If something goes wrong during the surgery, it automatically increases the risk of infection a couple of folds straight away. But there, the surgeons typically advise the patient that you don't have high risk, so if you develop any um, pain or redness, just walk in uh, to the eye casualty emergency area and we will manage accordingly. So and that's... one uh, last question. Um, do you think there are any uh, statistics uh, on which AIDS is... Uh, can the patient can develop most the infection? I mean, younger uh, no, there is no, There is no, 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 no. I think uh, age has nothing to do with this infection. Um, uh, it can happen in any age group. It's all about um, preoperative, intraoperative and postoperative issues. Um, uh, could be from operating theater, could be from poor uh, asepsis and uh, sterilization practices, uh, maybe very rarely poor surgical technique or patient's own risk factors. If they have infection in the body, which can go to the eye through bloodstream, which can also lead to infection. So it, there is no age-related issue. It's typically it can happen to anybody. But yes, of course, cataract is age-related. So most of the patients are in aging group. So they will have higher risk anyway.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.